Good morning. Uh, we are glad that you are here today. There is a sweet anointing of the Holy Spirit flowing in this place. Today is the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after the Passover began in Jerusalem. The symbols of the Holy Spirit are the descending dove and tongues of red fire. Also, breath and wind are symbols of the Spirit of God. So I believe that God has invited you here this morning that he might change your life. He wants you to be encouraged and be open to the great possibilities that he has for your life. He wants you to keep on being excited about being Jesus' disciples in this world that is sometimes discouraging and full of despair. The world needs you. I am Penny Corey. This is Kilmarnock United Methodist Church, and we are so glad to see your smiling faces this morning. I pray that you'll be blessed by our worship this morning. We give a warm welcome to any visitors. We want to connect with you, so please fill out a visitor card in the pew racks and place it in the offering today. If this is your first time with us, if you'll raise your hand, we will give you one of our welcome cups. Um, and thank you for being here this morning. <clears throat> we want to give an uh, invitation to all of you to a special worship service of healing this afternoon at 4 p.m. This will be a service of hope, reading of the scriptures, prayer, listening to healing music, silent meditation, words spoken over our lives, and the anointing oil of, of healing. So please help us spread the word about this. These um, prayer shawls have been knitted with love and prayer, and uh, they will be given out at today's service at 4 o'clock. We need your help. As all of you know by now, that Bert and I will be leaving uh, on the 23rd of June. So, you know, Bert's job is one of his jobs is um, working with the microphones in the church. If you can help us turn on the microphones and turn off the microphones, Bert is going to have a training session on a Wednesday, May 22nd at 5.30 in the sanctuary. So if you can come and help us out, we would ask you to do that, please. Mother's Day to Father's Day, all United Methodist churches take up a special offering for the Samaritan Program Fund. Through your generosity, you are able to help and support the residents of our United Methodist retirement homes who have outlived their financial resources. You may write a check to KUMC and write on the memorandum line, Samaritan Fund. Please contact our church office to let us know of any family or friends who are graduating this year from either high school or college or graduate school um, so that we can... Uh, present them in our church newsletter. The flowers on the altar today are given to the glory of God by Frank Martin, celebrating Lucy's 85th birthday today. <laughs> um, and please register your attendance in the pads that are on the center aisle, pass them down, and then back to the center aisle. Let us stand for our call to worship. In rushing wind and in tongues of fire, fill our house of worship. Open our ears to hear your voice and one another. Gather your people from everywhere. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, your Holy Spirit came to the saints in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. We welcome the breath and flame of your Spirit today in this house of worship. Our hope is in you, O oh God. Help us in our weakness and intercede for us according to your will. We pray in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn. 
This is the day we celebrate the beginning of the Christian church. Um, so really today is the birthday of the church. After Jesus was crucified, he promised to send a helper to his disciples who would be with them, he would, and with us forever. So one day all the type disciples were together in a house and this great wind blew. So can you stand up? Great wind. Oh, that's not a great wind. Great wind. Great wind. And then with the wind, through the windows came tongues of flame, and it settled on the heads of each of the disciples. And, but they weren't burned. The wind and the flame represented the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was the helper that God had promised to send. The wind represented God breathing life into all creation, and the fire represented the Holy Spirit who filled the disciples with enthusiasm, not just me, but enthusiasm about God. And hearing all this commotion, this wind and the flames and everything, a large crowd of people gathered outside. Now these people were from all over the world. And they all spoke different languages. And yet the disciples could understand each language that they were speaking. So this morning we are going to speak different languages. So y'all just bear with us. You are going to speak French. Have you ever spoken French before? Today is your day. Yes? Okay. You're speaking Spanish. You're speaking German. And you two are going to be the wind, okay? You're going to be the wind now. Okay, good. At the same time, y'all are going to, and these are, it's written phonetically, so y'all just be ready for this. Because after it's over, I'm going to interpret. When I say go, you're going you're gonna to say all this together, and you two are going to run back and forth like the wind, okay? All right, so start. <laughs> Did you understand that? What they said was, 
O oh God, my God, you are my God. Thank you very much. So let's, let's say a prayer. Father God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to guide us, to strengthen us, to be everything that we need to be. Help us, Lord, to listen to that Holy Spirit inside us and to do what you wish. Amen. Okay. And I have something for you. It's not chocolate, unfortunately. We are trained. All right. Tootsie Roll Pops. Thank you. Thank you. It's coming. It's coming. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> We have a special presentation this morning, um, and we would like to ask Alexis Alley and her family to join us at the altar. And Miss Margaret. This is a special day because Alexis is graduating from Middlesex High School. And as most of you know out there, Alexis has been a part of this church for a long time, so we've watched her grow up in the church, and uh, we are so proud of her and so glad um, to be able to send her with a uh, to college with a, a five hundred dollar scholarship from KUMC, and uh, so this is going to be presented to her today. I want to tell you a little bit about Alexis. She's a, been a member of the Middlesex High School Charger Band, is a member of the DECA, that's the Distributive Education Clubs of America Club. She is currently a part of the Key Club and has served as the president and vice president. She is involved in the National Honor Society. Alexis says that she loves music and plays the bass guitar in the local rock band with a few of her friends. She says, I am also interested in history and would like to earn a bachelor's degree in history from Clemson University, which I will be attending starting in the fall. I also plan to study finance while I am there as well. And so we congratulate you and send you with our love and our prayers. Thank you. And now Mary has a presentation as well. Alexis, it has been a complete joy watching you grow in this church. I can still remember when it was just Janie and Morgan, and then later came a tiny, sweet, happy Alexis. She would come to church with her mom and dad so little she was still and quiet, and every now and then she would pop up from her parents' arms, look around, <coughs> smile, and wave with her beautiful red glowing hair in that <laughs> tiny hand, then nestle back in with her parents. Alexis has always been a part of Sunday school, even if she was the only one. She has participated in vacation Bible school, children's programs, and Christmas plays. She has blessed us with her musical talents on the many instruments she has learned to play over the years. <laughs> As she has become a teenager and young lady, she has given back to the church in many ways, including volunteering with the children's programs. She has helped with vacation Bible school, narrated plays, helped in their Sunday school classes, helped at movie nights, teen night, and nursery care. We know as we have seen God's work in your life over the last 18 years, that he is going to continue to grow in your life, that you will continue to grow with him. Alexis, we, have, we as your church family are so excited for your next chapter. We pray that you continue to seek a personal relationship with Jesus daily. And we want you to know how very proud all of us are for you. We will always be here for you, supporting you, cheering you on, encouraging you, and praying for you. We know you will do great things as a tiger. Kelmarnock United Methodist Church loves you, and God bless you. And here is a hard and emotional Bible for you. Congratulations. 
congratulations. We are so super excited for you. And now we come to the time that we give our thanks, our praise, and our intercession to, um, to God for others. Um, so if you have written a request on the yellow cards, you may raise those up and an usher will pick those up. Um, we extend Christian sympathy and love to Polisa Makhofola and her family in the death of her grandmother, Lisbo Matlaton, um, who is 97 years old and she died in South Africa. So Polisa was here. Um, she has attended our 11 o'clock worship services as well as Lifeline's Bible study. She worked at the Tides Inn and was supposed to be here for another month, but she left on Friday to return to South Africa to be with her family. I received a text, and she has safely arrived in her home in South Africa. So let us pray for comfort and peace to be with their family. Let's pray for Lucy Martin, who will have back surgery on May 30th at Regional Memorial Hospital. Alice Cottrell has asked KUMC to pray for her healing as she has a surgery for colon cancer on June the 5th. Praise for Hazel Brandages, a great niece of Cindy and Gary Boyce. She was born on February the 20th, a premature birth at four pounds. She is now eight pounds and has gone home from the hospital and is progressing very well. Gary Boyce will have outpatient surgery at VCU on May 24th. Continue prayers of healing and comfort for Sharon Rice and also for Mary Tucker and Mary has pneumonia. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> this morning, O oh God, let us draw near to you with sincere hearts and with the full assurance that faith in Jesus Christ, your only son, brings peace and hope to our lives. You are an amazing God. We glory in your holy name. Oh God, we bring to your throne of mercy and grace those whose names we have mentioned today. Send a powerful healing touch to them and all who need the healing hand of Jesus upon their shoulders. Reach out with your compassion and meet their needs. I thank God in advance for his miracles of healing that will go forth today in Jesus' mighty name. O oh, great King of love, let the leaves of the tree of life bring healing and salvation to your people. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless our nation and our world. Bless our military leaders with wisdom as they protect and defend this nation. We pray on a daily basis for those who stand guard on our behalf. Send your wisdom and bless our military forces as they fight for liberty and freedom for all. Be with all in our country who have been so hard hit with the mighty winds of the tornadoes, destructions, and floods. Help them as they start to rebuild their lives. God, thank you for Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary to free us from our sins. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for the many miracles done in the power of Jesus' name and the, and the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask all of these things as we pray together, as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to turn to 881 in your hymnal. Let us stand and
together by saying the Apostles' Creed, and then as we sing the glory of Padre on page 7. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. bring an offering to God in his sanctuary and praise his holy name. Let us give our generous gifts, tithes, and offerings to God. Let the ushers come. Let us pray. O oh God, bless the gift and the giver and multiply these gifts for the kingdom's use in and through our church and world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
things you will choose to lose when you could win. If you will give your life away for nothing in return, then you are where my kingdom will begin. itself shall never more prevail against it for Satan's sad thrones are built on sinking sand upon this rock I'll build my kingdom and on this rock forever and ever it shall on this rock of revelation, I'll build a strong and mighty nation, and it shall stand the storms of time. Upon this rock, and on this rock, forever will stand upon. And it shall stand the storms of time upon this rock. I'll build my church upon this rock.
Let us bow our heads for a prayer. Speak, O Lord, take the truth of your word, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ and the glory of God might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Amen. Acts 2, 1 through 21, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken pro by the pro prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of my sermon today is Much More. Let us pray. Dear loving God, change lives today. Bless the words of this sermon with excellence and clarity, understanding, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us revelation to put your truths into practice in our lives. Jesus Christ, come and help us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pentecost Sunday. Yes, it is 50 days after the celebration of Easter. In John chapter 16, verse 7, Jesus says to his disciples, I tell you the truth. Let me assure you, it is better for you and it is to your advantage if I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor will not come to you. But 
If I go away, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. These words are the farewell discourse of Jesus to his followers. See, Jesus knew that the days ahead of him would be very dark days. It would also be dark and frightening days for his followers. They must have wondered, how in the world can it be to our advantage that Jesus will be betrayed, arrested, beaten, denied, mocked, sentenced to death, nailed to a cross, to die along with common criminals, and Jesus' entire ministry be stopped. How can that be to our advantage? You see, they could not know. For the work of the Holy Spirit and his power happened on the basis of the blood of Jesus Christ, and Jesus had not died yet at this point. Jesus knew that the outcome of his death would be a powerful and world-changing event. Because of the shedding of blood, each of us can know that we have a personal, constant, immediate, indwelling contact with our Lord and Savior Jesus. Jesus knew that he must return to the Father in heaven. That was the plan from the beginning. Jesus needed to convey all of this to his disciples that they would know the truth. And Jesus was telling them the truth of what was lying ahead for them. They also would need to know the power of the Holy Spirit would move them forward into God's preferred future. After Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, he didn't waste much time sending the Holy Spirit to his disciples. He even instructed them to wait, to stay in Jerusalem until they had received the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ had to leave earth so that his followers would learn to depend on the influence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, they became conscious of a new inward power that would bring transformation. It would bring conviction. It would bring forgiveness of sins. It would bring salvation. It would bring freedom from sins that would allow people to walk in the truth of God's word. This new sense of power is the significant factor in the experience of Pentecost. The power of the Holy Spirit changed the world. This, it was an inbreaking of heaven into human affairs. I want to say that again. This was an inbreaking of heaven into human affairs. Today, we must still stand up for our faith. Today, we must lead with our faith. God, the Spirit, is with us 24-7 and is always ready when we reach out to him. Jesus, in his human form, could only be in one place at one time. But the Holy Spirit will be with every believer at all all times and in all places. It was a miracle. The scripture text that we have read this morning from Acts chapter 2 tells about how the Spirit came down on those who were gathered there in Jerusalem. My goodness, look at all those who were present. They were God-fearing Jews that had come from every nation under heaven and had come to attend the Passover feast in Jerusalem. And all of them, say all of them, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They heard the sound of a violent wind that came upon them. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire 
that came to rest on their shoulders. And they began to speak in other languages, enabled by the Spirit. They spoke languages that they had not previously learned. And all of the people from the many nations understood the message in their own native languages. There were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Pergia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, visitors from Rome, Cretans, and Arabs, all declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. This was Pentecostal baptism. God's Holy Spirit would now go to the ends of the earth as all of these people from many nations would go home. As the crowds that day heard the noise and the commotion there, there was one who stood up. It was the Apostle Paul Peter who spoke to them about Jesus. He was saying, repent and believe the gospel. From his powerful message that day, there, there, and from the crowd of Jews gathered, there were 3,000 converts who became followers of Jesus. Pentecost. Yes, Pentecost is the birthday of the church. That day, the church of Jesus Christ was born. That day, there was a celebration of souls saved. Overnight, the church of Jesus Christ was born. No, not a brick-and-mortar church, but a church of people who had heard the wind and seen the fire. You see, the risen and glorified Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit had changed lives and he still changes lives today. Acts 2.41 tells us that those who accepted the Apostle Peter's message were baptized and changed from the inside out. The death, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus made all of this possible. See, the filling of the Holy Spirit that day in Jerusalem was an outpouring that was prophesied by the prophet Joel in the Old Testament times. God said through his prophet, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And this is the effect. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. My friends, there are still so many people who need to know the message of Jesus Christ today. And you and I who are filled with the Holy Spirit are the ones to go and to tell them. See, Pentecost is about receiving the power of God's Holy Spirit. So let us all reclaim our Pentecostal heritage. Let us get on our knees and pray and praise together. Let us pray for the salvation of souls. Let us pray for baptized believers to be set on fire with the boldness and courage to tell the gospel story and to witness to the power of the Holy Spirit. Keith Getty shares this message in song in these words. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, Breathe new life into my willing soul. 
Let the presence of the risen Lord come renew my heart and make me whole. Cause your word to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I cannot see. Give me passion for your purity. Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. Holy Spirit, come abide within. May your joy be seen in all I do. Love enough to cover every sin in each thought and deed and attitude. Kindness to the greatest and the least. Gentleness that shows the path of peace. Turn my strivings into words of grace. Breath of God. Show Christ in all I do. Holy Spirit, from creation's birth, giving life to all that God has made. Show your power once again on earth. Cause your church to hunger for your ways. Let the fragrance of our prayers arise. Lead us on this road of sacrifice that in unity the face of Christ may be clear for all the world to see. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul. The title of my sermon today is Much More. Jack Taylor says in his book by this title that I have a greater sense than I've ever had that God is up to something. There is a strange moving in the land. There is a fresh stirring. There are signs of the holy things to come all around us. Let us be aware of spirit visitations. God's power present in the Son of God, lives in us in power. All the riches of God's much more life becomes yours and mine as we live by faith. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says, In this world, Love is made complete in God if we are one with him. As he is, so are we in the world. Say that with me. As he is, so are we in the world. My friends, we represent Jesus in the world. We are conduits of the Holy Spirit to those around us in need. Let's expect Pentecost to happen every day. Let's look for the supernatural all around us. Let's be God's much more. Let us pray. O oh Lord, bring the power of heaven to earth today, right now. Fill your church with the fire of your love. If anyone who is listening to the sermon today needs to know what it means to have hope in a Savior and needs to know what it means to have their sins forgiven, may they simply call out to you saying, Lord, forgive me of my sins and please come into my life and heart today for I want to live my life like Jesus did. I want to be changed. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in God, the Father of us all, for in him we have the victor and we have the victory. Praise the Lord. Amen. We invite you to sing hymn number 347, The Spirit Song.
And now, my friends, go out into God's world filled with the spark of the Holy Spirit. Let love guide your actions. Listen for the spirit of truth. Spread the peace of Christ and remind everyone you meet that each one of us is a beloved child of God. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.